then next in our text comes something that Rinpoche preceded by saying is absolutely amazing. So far, we've talked about how to make tzatzas out of earth or clay, but you can also make them out of air, wind, fire, and even space itself. In the Tantra uh, of the uh, summarized quintessence of Mahakarunika, it says, now I will explain the yoga of tzatzas. Using any of the four elements, earth, water, fire, or wind, while reciting the quintessence mantra, that's Omene Peme Hom Shri, um, encase them with the mold, creating a tzatza. In the commentary on that part of the tantra written by Guru Rinpoche, he writes, in the case of the three elements other than uh, earth, you point the, um, the cavity of the mold at the uh, fire, the water, uh, or uh, the blowing wind. And while doing so, with the intention of forming a tzatza from that element, you repeat the quintessence mantra, Omane Peme Hom Shri, and then you imagine within the mold that the, that element uh, captured by the mold immediately becomes the body of the great compassionate one and that he will protect the world and perform a benefit for beings working through uh, that element. We also find in the uh, instructions on making tzatzas from the, um, the mind sadhana or heart sadhana, it says if you can, cl with clear samadhi and uh, the mantra, repetition of the mantra, form a tzatza out of space, wind, water, or fire, the merit will equal that of forming one out of earth. Now, Atami Rinpoche comments, the way to do this is you use an appealing or fine a form of the element. So, for example, when making a tzatza out of water, you use a flowing water, such as a, a pure um, waterfall or pure uh, spring, so running water. Uh, when making one out of fire, the fire should be uh, a, one that is uh, made, that is burning a fragrant uh, wood, nice wood, so a nice smelling fire. And if making one out of wind, then it should be a wind that's blowing from the east to the west. Now that completes the main body of the explanation of uh, tzatzas. And now Chamarokshay says, I will summarize that and clarify it and also describe various applications of it uh, as they're taught in uh, many uh, tantras and commentaries on them. He says, in order to make this easy to understand, uh, I will write it in a verse. Of course, it won't come out from my mouth in verse. Satsas are the supreme support or receptacle of the Dharmakaya of all Sugatas. Therefore, the statements of their benefits and uh, qualities are uh, found in oceans and oceans of tantras and commentaries. Here, I will give you what is like one drop of water uh, from, uh, the, those, uh, from that ocean. So please listen. Please listen, Ramshe said, means those who wish to make tzatzas and understand their benefit and their meaning um, should listen to this. In every tzatza, a hundred stupas are complete. Now, Ramshe said that refers to, he now has two tzatzas in front of him on his table. The one that is closer to Rinpoche is a hundred uh, stupa tzatza because it has the images of one hundred nirvana stupas. Tami Rinpoche continues, at the very least, no tzatza has less than nine stupas. 
The nine stupas refer to the eight stupa tzatza, the one that's also on Ramesh's table that was there this morning. The eight stupas, each one each of the eight types of stupas, are in the uh, imprint on the outside or sides of the tzatza. The basic shape of the tzatza itself is the ninth. So every tzatza includes either 100 or at the very least nine stupas. Each and every one of those stupas, whether nine or a hundred, completely displays or embodies the ten virtuous actions, the starting point of the path, the base of the stupa, and the 37 factors of awakening. They are all complete within each of those stupas on each of the tzatzas. Furthermore, the trikaya is complete. The mold is the dharmakaya. The material of the tzatza is the sambhogakaya, and the tzatza is the nirmanakaya. Therefore, if someone makes, even attempts to make a tzatza, out of earth with the wish to make a tzatza in commemoration of the Buddha. Or even if a child in play forms one out of sand in imitation of what they've seen or their elders. It was said by Buddha Shakyamuni that they too will achieve perfect awakening. Similarly, the Buddha himself said that anyone who reproduces or causes to be reproduced any image of the Buddha by any means of reproduction is certain to achieve perfect awakening. Especially if one makes satsas with one's own hands, it is this will purify any wrongdoing, including that of the five actions of immediate consequence. And this was said by the Buddha himself, as can be read in the Manjushri Mulatantra. If one makes 11,112 of the eight stupa satsas, or 1,000 of the 100 uh, stupa satsas, one has made, in either case, 100, created 100,000 stupas. Anyone who does this will achieve the state of a vijadara with control over longevity and live for a kalpa. They will achieve the five types of supercognition in this very life. In every future life, they will be born in a central land as its monarch. They will recollect their previous lives. Their learning of Dharma will be oceanic and their retention of it perfect. They will gradually and certainly achieve, achieve unsurpassable awakening. When performing rituals or ceremonies, either for the benefit of the entire world or society, or for the benefit of particular uh, sponsors, whether it is a thread cross ritual or apotropaic, I better use another word, uh, averting. The actual word for dopa is apotropiasis in English, but nobody would know it, so there's no point. Um, whether uh, a thread cross ritual or, or apotropaic in nature, if you make tzatzas, they will form the base, the best possible support for the success of the ritual or ceremony. Whenever you are about to begin any uh, intensive meditation or accomplishment practice, proceed it by making tzatzas. This will cause you to suffer no impediments in the course of your practice and to achieve Siddhi quickly. If Tantrikas, while attempting to accomplish deities, witness no signs of, of accomplishment, if they with their own hands make a thousand or ten thousand satsas and then continue the practice, they will gain accomplishment quickly. When making satsas, if you uh, append or add to the end of uh, your Gidam's uh, mantra, the, uh, uh, the additions 
or supplements of the four activities and imagine that uh, light rays of the corresponding color are emanated from the deity and satsa while making it, you will accomplish the four activities. If you make satsas while reciting the dharani of akshobhya, your uh, karmic obscurations will be ended. If you make satsas while reciting the hundred syllable mantra of Vajrasattva, your wrongdoing will be purified, your violations and impairments will be restored. If you recite, if you make satsas while reciting either the Dharani or the essence mantra of Amitayas, your life will be lengthened. If you make satsas while reciting the root awareness mantra from the Tantra on the Purification of the Lower Realms, then you will be able to free the deceased from lower rebirth. If you do this for the benefit of a deceased person who did very little wrong, and you do so making satsas, then for as long as those satsas are not destroyed, that person will certainly not fall into any lower rebirth. I have heard this, Jami Ramche writes, from the mouths of holy masters. If doing this for the benefit of those who've engaged in a little bit of wrongdoing, and you make 12 satsas, they will be freed from a lower rebirth. If making them for the benefit of someone who did more wrongdoing than that, then uh, make 11,112. If making them for the benefit of someone who did a great deal of wrongdoing, then multiply that number by 10, and they will certainly uh, be freed. In all of these cases, it is of the utmost importance that you clearly dedicate uh, the virtue of the tzatzas construction to the benefit of that person. Whoever, while reciting the dharani of Akshobhya, constructs 11,112 satsas, venerates them with offerings, and then places them in water, will definitely be able to free uh, any deceased person from a lower rebirth. And now he goes through the nine purposes that Atisha spoke of. Make satsas for the benefit of your teachers who have passed into other realms. This will cause their vision and their wishes to be completely achieved, remove any obstacles to their further progress along the paths and stages, and ensure that they be able to continue to ripen and free their followers and establish them further on the path. If you make tzatzas for the benefit of your parents, you will purify their wrongdoing and veils, cause them to gather the, to complete the accumulations, and in these ways repay their otherwise unrepayable kindness. If you make tzatzas in order to confess and, re and repair your own wrongdoing, then all of it, wrongdoing in general, the five actions of immediate consequence, or even root downfalls, will be purified. If you make tzatzas in order to confess downfalls, all of them, whether of the Pratimoksha, the Bodhisattva vow, or the vows of Tantra, will be purified. Especially, if you make a 100,000 satsas, you, that's odd, 100,000 satsas, you will repair any violations of the Samayas of body. And this is taught in the Tantras of the Wisdom Protectors. By making satsas, you will uh, repair the damage or um, obscuration of having come under evil influences, had um, negative uh, companions, or uh, been um, misguided by a uh, false spiritual friend. If you make satsas for the benefit of the ill, their illnesses, whether of the wind, bile, phlegm, or their combination, will be pacified. 
make satsas for the benefit of beings at the point of death. This will pacify their agony, their physical pain, uh, their hallucinations and delusions, and their fear. It will close the doors to their possible rebirth in lower states and cause them to be reborn in a pure realm. Make satsas for the benefit of beings in the bardo. Their hallucinations and delusions and their fear will be pacified and they will achieve awakening. Even if they were great wrongdoers, they will be reborn as a human or a deva, give rise to a virtuous state of mind and exert themselves in dharma. Make satsas for the benefit of all beings. This will cause you to, to create upon your awakening a pure realm in which all beings can easily take rebirth. Uh, Rimshay said this is very much like what Amitabha did. Make satsas while reciting the mantra of Sosudranga and this will uh, stop sudden infant death uh, syndrome within a, a family or for a specific uh, and cause the, the uh, mother and the baby to live uh, long and well without illness. Make satsas while reciting the mantra of Zambala. Your merit and wealth and prosperity will increase. Make satsas while reciting the mantra of Norjunma, uh, Vasudhara. This will cause your wealth and also your family lineage to flourish and increase. Append while making satsas to the mantra of your yidam, such as the six syllable mantra, Omane Peme Hum, Shantim Kuruye Swaha. By reciting that while making satsas, you will, you will pacify harm caused by fire, water, predatory animals, unjust uh, persecution uh, by a ruler, poisonous snakes, uh, carnivorous spirits, enemies, and um, uh, thieves and robbers. Similarly, by appending Pushtim Kuru Savaha to the mantra, your merit, longevity, uh, affluence, and prosperity will increase. By making satsas while appending Vasham Kuru Ho to the mantra, you will uh, gain control over uh, wind mind or prana mind and the inseparability of appearances in mind and attract all beings appropriately through the four uh, interests. Make satsas while appending Maraya Pai to the mantra and this will cause the eradication of Maras, enemies, and obstructors. If every day, without fail, you make seven satsas, all of the wrongdoing you have accumulated uh, in relation to Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, such as uh, unknowing denigration of them, will be purified. And this was uh, taught by Aryatara to Lord Atisha uh, in a vision. To give you an idea of the benefit of tzatzas, Chami Ramshe says, I have heard uh, this story. Um, at one time, um, one person made a tzatza, and thinking that the place was best for the most people to see it and thereby uh, generate the seed of liberation, he placed it in the middle uh, of a road. A second person saw it in the middle of the road and thought people might walk on it. So in order that the tzatza be protected from that, but that people still be able to see it, he placed it at the side of the road. A third person came along, saw the tzatza at the side of the road, and was worried that it would be dissolved by the rain. So he covered it uh, with uh, a shoe. A fourth person came along and saw a tzatza covered by a shoe, and so he removed the shoe, picked up the tzatza, and carefully brought it uh, to the shelter of a cave. All four of them equally, because of their good
good intentions accumulated merit and achieved uh, the result. Then uh, finally, uh, Tamaramshi writes that he has seen in some um, uh, tantric texts the statement that if a powerful uh, uh, tantrika performing ceremonies has caused the liberation or extraction uh, of others, um, then the since there wasn't their choice to be extracted, um, if the if there was any question in their motivation, if there was even a little bit of selfishness in that, um, then they accumulate negative karma, in, fight, in spite of the fact that the person is sent to a better place. And it's said that they can purify the, the wrongdoing of that if they make a lot of uh, satsas. So now uh, Ramshay says we'll have uh, questions. the format because this weekend's teaching is being webcast to all the affiliated centers in um, U.S., South America, and Europe, and um, they are joining the live webcast stream right now and to help make it more interactive. Um, the center has also sent in questions for your budget, um, so they can ask questions for your budget. So I would like to ask everyone, uh, if there will be one question from the center and one question from the audience, and please just Consul, 
be brought at any time. Uh, Rimshi is already says we're already collecting uh, these. Um, the guidelines are that the, uh, the the jewelry should be free from any uh, animal products, like the skin of any. It shouldn't be attached to the skin of an animal uh, or anything like that. Um, and it it has to be a fine jewelry, not costume jewelry. He said, and uh, pretty. And then if you bring that, then it will be put in um, a certain level of the stupa that's called the treasury of the yakshas, which will be explained tomorrow morning. Uh, this question is from Balmai KTC. Uh, it, uh, they asked, did the new Middle Arapa make salsa from his mother's bones? Uh, can we put you tell the story if that's true? Jitsu Milage Mayung Rupa Ne Sata Dagyobe. I think Kanazu Mahi Nosa Sasa Dagyobe did in the Mihi Kongo Rupa doesn't know. Rune, the Kongo Laji, she was a hit. Tell it to me, and the son of Samantha Ruchi said, Yaw was a hit. Sasa Dagyobe did in Mihi. Rimshe says he doesn't remember whether Milarapa made Sasa out of his mother's uh, bones or not, but he did gather her bones and bring them uh, to uh, for someone to bless. You need a mold. Um, I'm, I'm not going to talk more about that this afternoon. It will come up tomorrow. This is from Columbus KTC. Many years ago, Columbus KTC students wrote mantras for Tashi Goman Stupa. We all felt so honored to meet and be a part of such a sacred project. We would love to do this again. Mm -hmm. Also, may we help make satsas. Many people in our Sangha have learned. Columbus KTC Colorado ke tashi gomang chetan ke konsa shapa ke zong mopuji song deng song yang tata ngatsu ke chetan chaje ke ke la shati shue tsu de zong draya ke gokap tam den nang shen ke tsatsa soe ke gokap yongiri be yongiri tata nang shen dani penzara to konsa gange zong zong do yo loso says sure um, it's already started here but back in the library Tenzala and, and many others are um, rolling the Dharanis or the mantras uh, all the time. So people are welcome. Um, given that all is Dharmakaya, why the emphasis on pure materials? Like mm -hmm. Confidence? You mean, uh, I mean, Nice materials as opposed to right the, the earth being pure, pure the okay. water being pure. Okay. That that the chuchu ko korong sangso le drawa yendo sane dene sa sangma dong chu sangma peje tongo pa ke kere. Zuko te yengo re mo shuku yengo. Because you're not you're not actually constructing a dharma kaya. You're constructing a rupa kaya. So you want it to be nice. This is from KTC Jacksonville. Um, we rejoice in the merit of your teaching and wish you continue good health and longevity. We would like to ask 
are there special techniques or new transmissions or empowerments that should be learned before attempting to make a sansa?
What is the difference between the enlightenment stupa and the stupa of complete victory? As far as I can see, the enlightenment stupa has four steps, and the stupa of complete victory has three steps. What is the significance of this different number of steps, and are there any other differences between the two stupas? That's the complete victory one, and that's the enlightenment one. The chutin cha che in on the chutin ye ba the jung chuk chutin dong chutin dong ba the kutsay jinji la pe chutin am nam jok chutin de so pe ma se dao dao dos che ba thong kum dos che ba kare es ye ba che ba yendo che ba yo mare plus hongran de es de ki a de mare de de ri ya dong de ni de ri Um, the only difference between uh, the second stupa, the stupa of awakening, and the seventh stupa, the stupa of uh, utter victory, or the stupa of the blessing of uh, his own longevity, is that in the case of the latter, the stupa on the bottom of the page, and this is why you can't see it because it's a two-dimensional representation. The upper three stages of the four are round, not square. In the in the case of the、uh, stupa of awakening, all four、uh, steps are、uh, square or rectangular, and the, that's you can't really see it on a two-dimensional. They also ask, what's the significance of the numbers of steps? You mean why are there four? Well, the, yeah, I guess that's the question. The children mong jawa la bong nim shi yor, bong nim shi yapa ge children kare. Chila, a chambang jawa yapa shi yor, nam ta ko bong nim shi yor, arve do na chanda, bong nim shi di. Because they correspond to the path of accumulation, the three levels of the path of accumulation, and then the first half of the path of juncture. You'll remember that the uh, first uh, step corresponds to the、uh, four mindfulnesses, the second step to the fourfold perfect abandonment, the third step to the four feet of miracle, and the fourth step to the five faculties, which is the first half of the path of juncture. So、um, yeah, as long as we're talking about these seven stupas, we our little group was looking at this, and I think maybe the ones on the upper right are、um, reversed. Reconciliation and great miracles. Is it reconciliation the one with the octagon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's there. This this one is the. No, I have this sheet. You can show me, but I'll just get confused. No, no. See, this is like labeled. I think maybe the labels are reversed. Don't look at that one. Thank you. First of all, I can't read the print. It's too well, small, so I. So this one says it's labeled "Great Miracles" and it has the octagon. No, that's not. The, well, then I don't. I don't know. That, I just, so I this just, was handed out to everybody, and I think it's mislabeled. I don't know. I can't see it. I, I need my glasses, and I don't have them. Okay. Well, I'll just. People might want to check this out. <laughs> But the、uh, it looks like the, those two on the upper right. But you'll know when when they're set up outside. You'll be able to、yeah. examine them from every angle and see them very yeah, clearly. Yeah, people, if they're mislabeled on the sheet of paper, people might get confused. That was the thing. So look at it, and reconciliation and great miracles might be reversed on this quadrant. You know, this one that has the little squares on the edge. Is this making sense? I guess, but I can't see it, so I can't. I well, it's hard to explain. That's okay. Yeah.、So、I mean, I need a magnifying glass. Up here. Ah. Maybe you will see this one. Yeah, this one's. No, she has that. 
she's just looking at the second one. It's a stupa of awakening. So number two. No more? Yes. 
and the benefit of the Dharma. You can help others, you can help your relatives, uh, your loved ones, your friends, and so on. That's fine. If, if, the, um, if, if something, if by protecting, something maybe not so good happens to the attackers, is it your fault? We need, you need to give a specific. In, in other words, if if somebody is attacking someone you wish to protect, and by uh, protecting that person, the attacker is what? What is the not so good thing that happens to them? Uh, they die. But um, <laughs> but it's not your. It's, it's not necessarily your fault. Well, the thing is this. Um, Protecting someone is not going to kill somebody else unless the protection is a little bit more than protection. That's, that's my point. That's, you're not intending... You're intending no, but wait a second. The kids are not them. Well, these say it. Shinda ke sungwa dam chopa ke ledo sungjo pe penas ha sungko gomjo rao chiki ke shi hindro de ke shola de de la do putong ke shi song ai na rang lang yo re ste ne nga nga la song de paro po chi sungwa ke samje paro po shinda shi mare de sungwa mare de de se mare it, it can't happen. The act of protecting one person is not going to kill another person. That, that would be like, yeah. Um, this is a question from Harper KDC. What kind of stupa is being built for the Sistine Kanaba and what is the status of the construction? Do you mean the one in Illinois, Chicago? Must be. It does. The Zion, Illinois, Chicago, Kisacho, Della, the Jawa Wampo, Kugoma, Kudum Chitin, Chichengiori, Chitin Chaja, Nane, Karere, Chung Chitere, Narum, the Ursham, Nain, Ulasu, Tell them the Chung Chitin, Reyes, the Guba, the Countess, and I, you know, contracted the party. Yeah. 